sell you too. All right, we got something exciting today. It's a new egg box full of routers. How many routers did I get? One, ah, ah, ah. Two, ah, ah, ah. Three, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yep, folks, I'm upgrading my entire house's networking. So I got three of these Buffalo uh, N300 routers because they were cheap. And I took advantage of a Christmas Day sale to do this. Uh, all three of these routers together with free shipping cost me about $114. I've seen one router cost $130. So I think that's a pretty good deal. These were about 50 bucks when they were on sale. So there you go. Now, the current networking setup I have is I have one Linksys wireless N router uh, that I have set to G because I only have wireless G for the two wireless bridges and the one bridge repeater I have. And I was planning on getting more of those, but the Linksys router has issues. It gets very flaky uh, when the power goes out. Whenever the power goes out, it just goes into a boot loop. So I have to go downstairs and physically unplug it for 10 seconds, plug it back in, and then it's fine. And that got really annoying after a while. It still is annoying. So what I decided to do is just revamp the whole thing. Uh, I'll probably sell the old routers and uh, just use these. <clears throat> now, I have all my old routers running DDWRT so I can do the wireless bridging and the bridge repeating and control uh, my ports and stuff very well. All of these, all three of these, have DDWRT built in, so I don't have to flash all of them, which saves me a lot of time, and that's pretty nice. All three of these have wireless N, so I can use wireless N for the whole thing, which will be great. Uh, and they all have gigabit Ethernet, so I finally have gigabit in my networking, now that it's cheap enough for me to afford. And I like that. I really like that. And Buffalo makes really good routers. Uh, I've heard good things about them from... Uh, Sansui 350A here on YouTube. I've heard good things about them from UXW Bill. I've, I've heard good things about them uh, from quite a few people. And the ones that I've had to, uh, uh, the customers that have these Buffalo routers seem to be very happy with them that I've had in the past. So I think these will be good. Now these are WZR300HP routers uh, made by Buffalo. All three of them have DDWRT, and all three of them will be around the house. One will be in the basement where the modem is. One will be in my workshop where my file server and uh, my workshop PC is. Uh, and the other will be up here on that table in the dark corner over there. <laughs> so let's unwrap one of these and check it out. I'm only going to unwrap. I'm only going to check out one because they're all the same, obviously. So woohoo. Okay, I've taken the plastic off of one, so let's check it out. All right. Oh. Stupid tape. The tape actually says buffalo on it. How fancy is that? There we go. All right. Sweet. All right. Looks like it came with a air util air station utility CD and the manuals and some screws. I guess mounting screws. AC adapter is a wall wart. A very generic wall wart. Asian Power Devices Incorporated. Doesn't use much power. That's a good thing. 1.5 amps. Looks like it uh looks like it comes with its own SSID and key and stuff already set with DWRT. So I'll use that to set it up, and I'm not going to worry about the key because it will be, it's just an SSID, there's no MAC address or anything on there. And it comes with a flat Ethernet cable. Yeah, flat Ethernet cables are awesome. I like that. Props to Buffalo for flat Ethernet cables. Alright, let's check the router out itself. Here it is in its shiny piano black finish, which means this is the shiniest and nicest it will ever look. It will get scratches over time. These are the antennas up here, which are pretty nice antennas actually. I'm glad that there are some routers that still have external antennas because I plan to use these. I'm going to need them especially up in this room. Here's what you have on the back. 
have your uh, you have your camera not focusing. There we go. Uh, you have your power adapter. You have the WAN port. You have four Ethernet ports. Gigabit Ethernet. You have a USB port, which is pretty awesome. I've never the last router I had that had USB was probably eight years ago. <laughs> Uh, USB eject and it has a little switch up here that says router on off or auto not sure what that does I'll read the manual and figure that out I'm assuming that you just shouldn't even have to touch that and it looks like it has sufficient ventilation which is pretty nice caution high temperature oh, that's pretty cool nice stuff Alright, so that's one of these routers. Now I'm going to put the stand on so we can see how it looks that way. Turns out you don't need the screws for the stand. It just clips right in. So that's really nice. There you go. There's your router. Yeah, look at that. Ain't that nice. So I can just stand it up like that and point the antennas all around. Excellent. Be like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into DDWRT in these routers and set them all up. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, how I set them up. Not in great detail, but just what the purpose of each router is going to be. All right, I brought my ThinkPad down here with its silly backgrounds <laughs> uh, and I've plugged the router in so it's time to configure the router so I'm gonna head in here and see if I can connect to it it looks like it's trying to connect yeah it is it's trying probably because the router is just still booting up yeah it is Come on, router, do your thing. And it is connected. So let's go into Chrome here. Oops. And go to the address they tell me to go to, which is 192.168.11.1. Then you enter the password, which is, you know, well, the worst the worst password combination in the world, admin and password. <laughs> so they make it easy if you screw up your router. They put simple passwords in there by default. I'm going to change those to something uh, better. Checking for internet. Hold on. Take that out of the main router. Stick that in here. Put that in the blue port. Eh. Eh. Get in there. There you go. Connect a LAN cable and click next. Let's try this. Checking for internet. That's what we want. While it's doing that, I'll tell you about this router. This is the Linksys router that likes to boot loop whenever the power goes out. I call these the spaceship routers because they, they, they look like they could fly through space. <laughs> this router still works perfectly. Uh, I'll probably keep it and ditch the wireless G1s because this is still a good wireless end router. It just has quirks that annoy me. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, these routers I think will be much better, but that router I'm definitely not going to get rid of. I mean, it's still useful and it still works. However, there's a wireless G1 I will be getting rid of that has a, a, a WAN port that's busted. So. If any of you guys want a router with a busted WAN port, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be putting it on eBay at some point. I'll stick it in an eBay stuff video, I guess. This is taking forever. Well, anyway, I'm going to get this all working. Okay, I have router number one set up. This is router number two. Now, this is going to be the repeater bridge. That I mentioned. This is the this is the router that goes up in my bedroom. Uh, it bridges with this router, but also sends off its own wireless signal. So 
That's what that's going to be for. This Linksys router I'm going to put away someplace and save just in case I need it again. Uh, so, on to router number two. Nice thing with DDWRT is there are manuals online you can follow. So you can uh, figure out what you're supposed to do. And I refer back to these whenever I uh, set up a router with DDWRT on it. So make sure to get that page up before you connect to a new router like that. So I'm going to set this one up. Okay, so I followed the instructions on here and I ended up with I ended up bridging to my main SSID, which is Buffalo, Maine, right there. It won't help if you can see it. It's Buffalo, Maine, right there. I bridged this, this router wirelessly to it. I turned off WAN mode, so it just acts as a router only, not a gateway. And I've, the nice thing about DDWRT is you can have virtual interfaces. And that's exactly what I've done to repeat the signal for my bedroom. I have put a repeated signal with the same security and everything. Uh, so this also outputs a signal. And I've also upped the security of the entire network from WEP to WPA2. Uh, it's been long overdue for that. And I've just been super lazy about it, so we're going to do that. The nice thing is I can add another virtual interface. If I have a vintage PC, I can add another virtual interface and use a WEP uh, method of security or use no security at all. So let's say I had a vintage Mac from 1998 that didn't support WPA2. I could just add a virtual interface to take care of that. All right, we're on to router number three, which is going to go in the workshop. I was originally going to try to use one of the original routers I had, but DDWRT didn't want to agree with it, so I'm just going to use the new one anyway. I kind of wanted to say this is a spare, but, you know, what, whatever. I bought three of them, I might as well use them, right? So, I'm going to configure this one as a client bridge rather than a, br rather than a repeater bridge. So, it won't repeat the Wi-Fi signal, but it will bridge with the main router right here. So... That's the only difference between the one I put in my bedroom and this one, is that it will not be repeating a Wi-Fi signal uh, to that particular room. It'll just be used for wired networking, and that's it in the workshop. Since the wireless router's right there and the workshop is just behind that closet, it seems stupid to, you know, uh, repeat the signal. All right, the router is in its hiding place on top of my workshop computer. This computer is going to be changed out fairly soon, so that should, that'll be a future video. Uh, got the router on top of there, have this computer hooked up into it, and I have the server back there hooked into it. So now I have Gigabit in my workshop, which will be really good for using the workshop computer to transfer files to the server because it won't take forever to do it. And now I'm booting up the workshop computer to make sure, uh, to make sure that my client bridge thing worked. All right, I booted up the workshop computer. Let's check Firefox and make sure I get an internet connection here. This computer needs to be replaced. It's getting a little bit slow. Let's try YouTube. And YouTube worked. It worked perfectly. Sweet. Success. Woohoo. So just to recap, I have this router connected to the main one via a client bridge for the workshop with gigabit uh, networking in here now as well. I have this Buffalo router set up as the main router so it's not doing anything special it's just providing internet for the network in the house so that's your typical router acting as a router would with wireless and gigabit. And this router up here in the bedroom is acting as a repeater bridge. I have it set up as a client bridge but in the virtual interfaces of DDWRT, I've set up uh, a separate SSID so that wireless devices up here can connect as well. This is the consequence of living in a big house. You really need a unnecessarily complicated uh, network setup. Whenever I move out of this house, I hope to have a smaller place. In fact, I guarantee you I'll have a smaller place where I only need one router or maybe one or two or maybe one and some switches or something. Because buying three routers and having to do all this is kind of annoying. I'd rather just have one router, one or two routers, and be done with it. So, there you have it. We have one router acting as the main, this one acting as a repeater bridge up here, and the one in the workshop acting as a client bridge. Now, my main computer here is hooked up to the, upstairs, the router upstairs here in my bedroom, 
uh, via Ethernet. So it's bridged wirelessly uh, via Ethernet, basically. So this is going to be a faster connection too, which I'm pretty excited about because I've been using wireless G for so long and wireless N uh, should be pretty good. Should be a nice upgrade. So, yeah. This is my old networking equipment. Here is the router that was in the workshop. It was a Linksys WRT54GS, which are some of the best routers I've ever owned. These routers are fantastic and take the DDWRT extremely well. Here's another one, an older variant. This one has problems. The WAN port on the back is dead and it tends to get pack and this one in particular tends to develop packet loss uh, when when the room temperature is higher so heat issues yay that one will probably be going on eBay because of the problems it has it still works it's just that uh, its quirks are kind of annoying and of course here's what used to be the main router this uh, WRT 160N version 3 this one also took to DDWRT extremely well but the main problem it had uh, it worked perfectly but the only issue it had is whenever since putting DDWRT on there, whenever there's a power outage and uh, this thing comes back on after the power outage, it gets stuck in a boot loop. So you end up having to come down. I ended up having to come downstairs, unplug it for a while, then plug it back in every single time that happened, and that that annoyed the hell out of me. The one router I have here that I've never had a problem with is this particular uh, WRT54GS. This one's been rock solid. I bought this one used off of Amazon for 20 bucks, and it's been working great for about a year or two. So there you go. This is my old networking equipment. Now I have all the same router all across the house, which is really nice. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these two routers yet. I might keep them. I might not. But this one for sure is going to go on eBay because I don't need it anymore. Uh, so, yeah, network upgrade for the house. Gotta love Christmas sales. That's the best time to do this sort of thing, and that's why I did it when I did. So, $114 to upgrade three routers in my house. Uh, uh, that's, I'm so glad I jumped on that, because I think the speeds are going to be nice up here. Anyhow, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed seeing this, and... Uh, there you have it, folks. If you guys want information on how to set up DDWRT on routers, I recommend you check out the wiki pages on DDWRT.com. Uh, they, they'll tell you a lot more than I could ever tell you. That's what I used to refer to when I set up all the routers here. So, yep. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.